My name is Trip Borman, and in this episode of Samia VC, this is the first edition of a new series called Samia VC Rapid Pitch, where founders get a chance to share a demo or abbreviated public slide deck on Samia VC, attracting attention from potential investors and having the opportunity to tell their story in their own words. In this episode of Samia VC Rapid Pitch, Kiwi co-founder and COO Maximiliano Di Cranian shared the marketplace they are building to incentivize consumers to buy and save food before it is thrown away. I had the privilege to meet him and Mauricio Kremer when I was in Mexico City in March and enjoyed hearing about what they were building. So I'm excited that they now have the opportunity to share that with you. And if you're interested in sharing what you're building on Samia VC Rapid Pitch, email rapidpitch at Samia. VC. Okay, Maxi, could you start by showing us a little bit more about what Kiwi does and how you guys solve this problem better than anybody else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, what Kiwi does is incentivizing uh, the final consumers, people like you and most people listening to this to this podcast, to always choose and buy those products that, those products that are closer to population. And we do that through an, an app where we essentially uh, tell our users which are the product categories they can they can buy. And they can buy them at, at any supermarket. This is, for example, the, the app as our users see it in Mexico, where people can choose which supermarket is it that they are shopping at. For example, let's say I'm at Walmart. And then I can see all the product offering that, that I have there. For example, uh, here, just an example, uh, let's say uh, you apply yogurt. I'm at the store and I, I can know here that, okay, if I buy a yogurt that expires in less than 10 days, I get 40% cashback in my account. And if it is expiring in less than 15 days, I get 50 to 15%. Then it's up to me as a consumer to choose and buy this product at the store and pay full price at the store for this, for this product. And not only that, but uh, we also help you find some of the products that have already been found by our, by our other users, by our community. And this is key because this is really information that isn't available, nor from the retailer, nor from the food producer. No one really knows when products will expire. So by using this, we make it easier for our user to, to find these products and to buy them. The next step would just be uh, after leaving the store, after checkout, let's say I'm at, back at home, and all I need to do is then take a picture of the, the ticket so that I can validate, so that we can validate that you actually made this purchase. I don't have a ticket with me, but just for the purpose, let's say that I do. And then I just uh, choosing which is the product, scanning a barcode, and uh, the, taking a picture of the expiration date. I don't have anything with me, but just as an example. And this all ends up uh, here in, in money that is uh, in, at the user's account, and that the user can choose to do whatever they want with it. They can take it out to the bank account, to a fintech, or now even charge their uh, food money on their mobile phones as well uh, in, some, in some companies. And not only that, but another thing we also do is we use gamification to encourage our users to, to use this, this even more. And after achieving certain goals, we even plant a tree in their name, uh, which is something that we think is also quite cool. Uh, not only we, we do know we have a direct impact uh, with what we do in the food waste, that is a huge issue as we will probably discuss later, but we think that this is always a, a nice way to make it even, even uh, deeper the, the impact you have. Maxi, thank you so much for that intro. I really appreciate that. Um, I have a couple of like macro questions and I want to get into some of the nitty gritty, but yeah. so you, you build the relationships with the food producers. What sort of relationships do you have right now and how did you get them? Yeah, we, we build the, the, the relationship directly with to the with the food producer, sorry, and also with some retailers as well. But the, the uniqueness of our business model is that we really do not need any integration or information from the stores. And that's why it's very, very scalable. And that's why we can give a solution to these food producers at every single supermarket uh, at any country where we operate. And that's the, the uniqueness of this business model. And now we are already working with the companies like uh, Sigma, like Bimbo, and uh, retailers like uh, Via, and, and plenty of, of other companies uh, in Mexico and also in Argentina that, that are the two countries where we, we operate. And it's really something very simple for them because we need nothing from these companies just saying, okay, which are the products where they have an issue, uh, how much money are they willing to put on a discount uh, to sell these products that are 
that would expire otherwise. And then it's all up to up to us and the community just uh, on moving this, this product, creating these extra sales, and having a positive impact both financially and also uh, environmentally. And so, when that receipt gets that's published, is it your team? Is it a human that looks over that, or is that some sort of AI? No, it's a semi-automatic. Okay. Uh, we we get through AI all the information from the from the tickets and also from the creation date of the product. And then it's just a manual validation of checking that that is okay. And it takes a few seconds to, to do that. And the user gets back their, their money on average on 24 to uh, 48 hours. And so this problem is obviously a global problem of grocery stores with items that are going to expire. What What is the solve for that in the US and in other parts of the world? Does anybody else do this? And, and why is this not a thing in the US? Yeah, it's, it's a huge issue globally. Uh, in regions like, like ours in Latam, that's for you to have an idea, around 5% of products that enter the supermarket and end up being thrown away. And it's a huge, huge issue. We are talking about an opportunity only in LATAM of for over $18 billion a year. But as you mentioned, Trip, this not only happens in LATAM, this happens everywhere. In countries like the US, the issue is around 4%, uh, for example, and it's uh, still huge. Uh, and I would think that the main reason why this issue hasn't been solved so far is because of how many players really come into, into account. This isn't only an issue of the retailer, it isn't an issue only of the final consumer, and it isn't only an issue of the, of the food producer. So uh, the truth is that in many cases, the retailer just uh, gives puts that, that issue back to the food producer. The food producer doesn't really have enough uh, tools to, to address this. And it all ends up enough in the final consumers that end up paying for these additional costs of all these inefficiencies uh, in the final final prices. And this is really a uh, unique business model that we didn't really take from anywhere else. Uh, there are other startups, of course, working on, on the on food waste, startups like do to go for example, are very well known in other countries. Uh, but the, the main difference in our business model, as I mentioned before, is really not meaning to to engage and to change operations at every single store. This, that's what makes this very uh, scalable for, for us and also for our customers that can see an impact everywhere. Amazing. I want to hear more about the journey. You guys are Argentinians. You came to Mexico. I want to hear more about that and then more about some of the fundraising you guys have done thus far. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, all three founders are Argentinian, as, as you mentioned. We started in 2021 working on this issue. We actually met while studying an MBA. Um, and we we realized that this was, this was a huge opportunity, uh, not only on the economical side, but also on the environmental and social. Uh, just we, we live in a region where 40% uh, of people uh, can't really access food uh, adequately, and where at the same time, 40% of food that is being produced is, is, is thrown away. So we saw uh, a big opportunity here, and we actually started with, with a different approach in, on our first uh, attempt where we were trying to, to give this information to retailers when these products do expire. That is something mm. that no one really has. But we eventually learned that this, that wasn't enough. I mean, even if we told a specific retailer, okay, this product is going to expire at, at their store, they really didn't have the, the strength and the, and the willingness even to really make a change in, in this. And they still needed the final consumer and the food producer because in some cases, those were the ones that suffered with the most. And it was uh, by February of last year, 2022, that we saw this business model as an opportunity and we launched in Argentina two years you see today. And the truth is that we saw uh, an amazing uh, fit in both parts. Uh, on the one side, this, these huge corporations are really eager to find a solution to this issue. Uh, huge problem for them and that impact directly their PNL. And on the other side, of course, most people are willing to, to change a little bit their, their habits and uh, if they get money for, for that. And uh, after only a few months, we saw a fit there and decided to expand also to, to Mexico, where we are seeing also a, an amazing fit with companies like Sigma, Bimbo, et cetera, et cetera, and scaling also quickly on, on the user base. Amazing. So what's down the road? We got Argentina, we have Mexico. What, what's going to happen in the next you know, six to 12? Yeah, we're really focused on the Mexican market right now, but we see, as, as you mentioned before, a 
huge opportunity globally for, for this issue that really has to be solved. We are starting in LATAM, uh, uh, funding to, to, to other countries as our initial scope, but we definitely do see an opportunity also in countries like the US, like the US to move this, this solution uh, because the pain is the same for these companies. I mean, if a company like Danone has a pain like this in Mexico, I mean, we are certain that the same pain is out there for them also in countries like the US, Europe, et cetera, et cetera. Amazing. And okay, and then for the audience, are you guys fundraising right now? And then tell us a little bit more about that fundraising um, that you have in the past. Yeah, um, we are now fundraising. We are seeking one one million dollar uh, to complete our pre-seed uh, funding round. Uh, we are already funded by by several VCs like uh, Newtopia, uh, Anthem NLC, um, Treno, and several other both impact and food tech uh, VCs uh, out there, and also several angel investors that come also from this from this sector. They know this about this issue, how big an opportunity this is. So we are very happy with that, and now uh, looking to to close this this round in the next uh, few months to to keep to keep a uh, to give scaling and also to, to address, we now have a positive uh, impulse from this company for to keep growing because they have already validated that it makes sense for them on a small scale, and now they want us to grow faster and for us to have a bigger impact on on them. Amazing. Okay, is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with in conclusion? Uh, just that I think it's a it's a great time to to to. To invest in LATAM, the, the opportunities are, are huge. And as entrepreneurs uh, are really prepared for complicated times like, like this one. And, and I see a huge opportunity here. And lots of, I see a future where us uh, entrepreneurs for LATAM will bring solutions to other regions, not only uh, that solutions from the US or Europe will come to us. And I, I, I can see that every day here in Mexico and also back in Argentina. And I think that's uh, future for change and something that your audience must have in mind for the future as well. Amazing. I would agree, Maxi. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the Simi VC podcast today. I very much appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching this episode of Samia VC. My name is Trip Gorman. Make sure to like and subscribe wherever you view the podcast. And if you are interested in sharing your own startup story and what you are building on Samia VC Rapid Pitch, email rapidpitch at samia.vc. And be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter that runs down all the venture funding in Latin America and sociopolitical news from every single country. Subscribe at dealflow.la.